For a certain generation, the V10 engine is a standout favourite, and yet over time there has been so few 10 cylinder road cars ever built. I've created a list of the cars, but do tell me if I've missed any out. Let's go through them. There was the Lexus LFA, the Porsche Carrera GT, Audi R8 and S6, the Lamborghini Gallardo and Hurricane, the Dodge Viper and the Ram SRT, the BMW M5 and M6, the E60 and the E63, the Bristol Fighter, the original Volkswagen Touareg, a whole host of heavy duty Ford vehicles that use the Triton V10 and the Wiesmann MF5. I think that's everything, but as I say, comment below if I've forgotten any of them. Now that may seem like a massive list of cars, but actually in the grand scheme of engine layouts, that's an incredibly tiny group of cars. But what if I was to tell you that another car could have been added to this list? A small British sports car that very nearly made it to production that you probably haven't heard of before. This funny looking thing is the Connaught Type D Syracuse, a two-seater sports car that was supposed to be designed and manufactured in Wales in 2004, and there is at least one test mule that exists somewhere in the world. The YouTube channel T Martin D is the best source of original video content of this car and there are a few random articles about it floating around the internet. It was going to cost £64,500 and most of that price tag can be put down to the engine underneath the bonnet. Connaught designed and built its very own tiny supercharged V10 engine that only had a displacement of 2 litres. And to put the engine exactly where they wanted it in the engine bay, they made an incredibly narrow angle V10, meaning it only needed one cylinder head. Most V10 engines have their bank set at 72 degrees for the best balance. This engine had its bank set at 22.5 degrees, incredibly narrow for a V10. You could see this thing as the first ever VR10 engine. It apparently produced 300 brake horsepower and 274 pounds feet of torque, all fed through a 5 speed manual gearbox and would get the car to 60 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds and onto a top speed of 170 miles an hour. The engine was set back as far in the engine bay as possible to get the best weight distribution. It was actually encroaching into the cockpit to get it as central as possible, very much see it as a front mid-engine sports car. And the whole package came in at under a ton, 950 kilograms. There were going to be 100 cars built, but it's kind of hard to see what its rivals would have been. It was priced like the Porsches of the time, so you could say the 996-911, but the recipe was much more like a Lotus or a TVR, something like the Tuscan. In fact, the whole project reminds me a lot of modern day TVR, a small engineering outfit trying to kickstart something out of Wales and fill in that hole of the niche British sports car. If you were boring, but I guess sensible about a project like this, you'd start by fabricating a space frame chassis, and then you'd make fiberglass body panels to put on it, and you'd ask a bigger manufacturer if you could borrow an engine. The Connaught instead had a full aluminium body that was set on a stainless steel and composite structure and then of course it had that completely bespoke V10. There were even plans to make a hybrid version of the car and the company did make the electric tech and were testing it in Ford Transit vans on the road to then transplant it into their cars. So Connaught were thinking about a hybrid performance car years before the Jaguar CX-75 was thought up and even longer before the famous Holy Trinity came along and completely rewrote the history books. I'm fascinated by this thing because at least one of them was made and engines were tested. Here's some footage of Tim Bishop, the head of the whole engineering project, doing some engine calibration work. <laughs> It does sound quite weird, doesn't it? But somewhere on a shelf, one of those two litre supercharged engines is sitting gathering dust. It may have got nowhere near actually powering a vehicle. But there was at least one Connaught Type D Syracuse built and it did run under its own power. And now it's just sitting somewhere, God knows where. Here's a clip of it moving. So let's recap. It was a supercharged V10 manual 
rear wheel drive, aluminium bodied, two door, British sports car that had hybrid torque filling tech waiting in the wings. What a thing! So I'd like to finish this video with a plea. If it just so happens that any one of you guys watching was involved with this project, or you know anyone that was involved with this project, or you recognise the garage in Wales that this car was built and tested at, please get in touch with me. The best ways to do that are either a DM on Drive Tribe or a DM on my Instagram. The links to both those things will be in the description below. The world has nearly lost the V10 engine for good, so I'll happily do my bit to try and unearth one of these narrow angle gems. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.